I'm the big milkshake. We all want to better ourselves. We strive to be healthier, more productive, better looking. Well, I don't strive for the latter. But, <laughs> but one of the best ways to improve ourselves is to help others. So what if we focus less attention on ourselves and instead work to help those around us be better? On today's Microwave Side Chat, I'm going to share with you three new methods that I've developed that you can employ to help those around you reach their full potential. Method one, say you're deep in conversation with someone. This person is sharing their opinions, fears, memories. How can you steer the conversation in a direction that will enrich this person? Easy. When they start confiding in you about that dream about the two-headed dog or whatever, you interrupt and tell them about your dream or whatever. And I don't mean wait till the end of their sentence to cut them off. I mean you shut down every sentence they try to say. <laughs> don't let them get a word in edgewise. You talk nonstop and ideally about yourself. Interacting, interacting with people in this way will force them to practice their listening skills and become better listeners. A noble objective indeed. <laughs> Granted, they may not like you at first. But based on my experience, and based upon my experience, they may not talk to you for a couple of years. <laughs> but, but, when you leave lengthy messages on their voicemail every night at 2 a.m., I can assure you, they'll be listening. <laughs> now you may ask me, the big milkshake, this sounds like an awful lot of work. Well, of course it is. But you'll be making a difference for others. So pat yourself on the back for a job well done. <laughs> Method two, <laughs> if despite your best efforts in implementing method one, someone manages to get in a word or two, then what? Well, likely they'll be bragging about something. A promotion, <laughs> that new car, a new relationship, how cute their kids are. Method two involves trumping everything they say. <laughs> they, get one ra they get a raise, you got two raises. Their kid got into college, your kid became the dean of a college. They got a new dog, you just bought that dog in a bidding war. There's nothing they can do about it. It's, it's your dog now. <laughs> Bragging in this way will help others. How? Because it will help them to feel less good about themselves and become humble. And humility is one of the core virtues of the evolved human being. Take Einstein or Socrates as an example. These are the best minds in human history, revered sages, and they were as humble as can be. Okay, let's just pause for a quick review. To teach listening, we talk. To inspire humility, we brag. I assure you, this is a much better model than teaching through example. I call it, than, than teaching through example, I call it teaching through opposites. Okay. Let's move to method three. But first, any questions? Okay, good. <laughs> method three. I'm going to lay the foundation and you guys give it a try. Okay. It is said that giving or being charitable is good for the soul. Now, keeping in mind teaching through opposites, how can we force others to give back? Any ideas? Armed robbery. That's one good idea, but that's not what we're looking for. It's close, though. If we talk to teach listening, and, and brag to cr humility. Anybody? We take. We take. See something that someone has that you or a loved one wants? Take it from them. No need to say please. Just take it. By taking from them, you will force them to be a donor or a giver. And mission accomplished. Just to, bra just to brag for a moment and to keep talking nonstop, I am such an advanced taker that just to help others, I will take their treasured possessions, even if I don't need or want them. <laughs> Let me just give you one example of the power of taking. The other day, I shoplifted a banana from this small deli over at the corner. The store owner saw what happened, and he ran after me. He grabbed me by the arm. He looked in the eye, and he said, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> taking from me. <laughs> I so appreciate the chance to be charitable and give you some fruit so that you won't starve. <laughs> he then went on to thank me. 
he thanked me again. He thanked me for the exercise he got running after me. You see, his doctor had told him that he had to begin exercising or bad things would happen. And he'd been reluctant to do so. Who knew? His running after me, because I took from him, forced him to exercise. And then he thanked me because my banana theft gave him a moment of appreciation for all of the bananas he still had in his life. <laughs> Well, this is what he was going to say, except for the fact that I interrupted him, bragged about my $60,000 Rolex, and uh, quickly fled the scene. <laughs> but I know what was in his heart. And what I said is what he would have said if he had a chance. And so you see, by taking from this man, I gave him the gift of giving. And by taking from this man, I gave him the gift of exercise and therefore help, health. And by taking from this man, I gave him the gift of gratitude. I was almost in tears. I wasn't in, I wasn't in tears, but I almost was. <laughs> in closing, I simply ask you this. Do you want to give back in this way? If so, then you can start by taking. Taking the advice I have shared with you in tonight's microwave side chat. Mm -hmm. Until next time on The Big Milkshake, wishing you as many milkshake moments as possible. <laughs>